Hello and welcome to this Inova Systems webinar with me Adam Rose. In this video we're going to have a look at the SolidWorks RX tool. It's a tool that you can use as part of the kind of range of SolidWorks programs that allows you to go in and diagnose and deal with problems with on your computer and with the software generally. In order to get to the SolidWorks RX tool, what we need to do is go, first of all, to our Start menu. And to go the long route, you'll find it under the Programs list. And if you go down to the version of the SolidWorks software you're using, and go into SolidWorks Tools, you'll find the RX within there. OK? It's a fairly straightforward tool, and it's just a series of tabs which allow you to navigate through uh, and make various changes and record problems and things like that. You've got your home tab, first of all, and that just gives you, first of all, just links to various different areas on this RX tool. So you've got just links to the different tabs that are available. Okay, and a short little introduction to what each one of those will do. You've also got SolidWorks safe modes, which are particularly useful. If you're trying to diagnose a problem, you can actually start SolidWorks in particular safe modes to try and cancel out some issues, to try and narrow down where the actual problem lies. So the first one of those is the ability to start SolidWorks software in OpenGL mode. And if we just run through and open the software in that mode, it opens it up with a, an option on which disables the graphics card. Okay. If I go to my options menu, down to where it says performance, you'll see this option is turned on to use software OpenGL. Okay. And normally you can toggle that on when you first open the software, but it's just automatically open the software with that option on. That uses a software emulated version of the graphics card, which just basically means that we're running through, it gets rid of any kind of detailed appearances or any kind of scenes that we've set up, maybe in the background. It just gives us a very simplified display. Okay. What it will do is if you are seeing the same issue, um, or if your issue disappears when you're using this OpenGL mode, you know that it's possibly an issue with the graphics card or an issue with the graphics driver. Okay. So I'll just close down this software. The next one we've got here is the ability to launch software by bypassing any of the tools option settings. So there's various options you set up when you first uh, go into SolidWorks and you, you make, uh, make sure it's all routed to the right location. What, uh, what this one will do is it will just set all of these settings back to default. So any of the system options within the software that uh, deal with every single document within uh, the SOLIDWORKS system, they'll just be set back to the default. So like things like the file locations for the document templates. Okay, I'd set up a few different alternative locations in there. It's just set me back to what was uh, the standard. And that's just to try and cancel out any of those things that you might have set up in the options that could be causing the issue. Or alternatively, you've also got the option uh, with this tool, tools and uh, options mode to actually disable any of the acting active add-ins as well, which will just turn all of these items off just to try and narrow down what whether maybe the toolbox or something like that could have been causing an issue with your software. So by going through and just trying each one of those modes with your issue and just running through the problem, you can test where the issue actually lies and then uh, try and narrow down your search. The next tab we've got here is the Diagnostics tab, and you do need to be connected to the internet for this one to work. When you are, you click uh, the Reload Results, and it just goes away, and it checks on a few databases to make sure everything's up to date and everything's OK. The first one of which, which is obviously quite an important point, is the graphics card and the driver that you're currently using. What it will tell you is whether your graphics card and driver combination is suitable for the software. You'll see that currently on my machine, I've got a graphics card which is supported, and the driver is fully up to date with what SolidWorks says is the most recent certified driver. But you can always go to this video testing website where you can actually get the latest drivers if you haven't got them. But you will get a variety of different results when you actually go through this tool. Okay. If you don't have a certified graphics card, then you're likely to get this diagnostics result with, with a red X. And it's showing you that basically um, whatever your graphics card is, it can't be found on SolidWorks' database. Okay. 
for, to have a certified graphics driver and a certified graphics card, it's more likely to be those NVIDIA Quadro cards uh, that are fairly sort of recent, and then the ATI Fire GL or Fire Pro. Okay, generally those kind of cards will work fairly well with the software. You see, most of these are NVIDIA Quadro cards, and you'll see that uh, with this one, it's 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 fairly old now, so that it's no longer compatible with the software. Um, and like I say, you may want to think about upgrading the graphics card if you do have a similar situation. With this one, we've got uh, the fact that the graphics card is supported, like I had on my machine, and the driver is up to date. And then with the bottom one there, we've got the fact that the the graphics card is supported, but the driver is for an older release of SolidWorks. So it gives us this button here which allows us to download the latest driver automatically and then actually goes away. It pops up with your Internet Explorer download window or whatever Internet browser you use and it'll actually let you download the driver straight away. Okay, so it does make the process of updating your graphics card and graphics driver very easy. The next few points here um, just give you general information about the system. Okay, you can see whether you've got enough free disk space and things like that. Uh, and at the bottom here, it gives you a key as to what each one of these ticks and crosses actually means. So if you've got a, a yellow cross on there, it's giving you a warning message. You may correct it, but it may not necessarily uh, cause any issues if it isn't. Okay, you've also got uh, the red test error. That's something you could do with actually dealing with, maybe causing issues with SolidWorks. Okay, and this one is the information. Um, now you'll see the SolidWorks is currently running. So if we were to close SolidWorks down, that should get rid of the uh, the yellow here. But we've got to refresh until we actually see the results. Okay, and now you'll see it's turned into an information symbol, showing us that the SolidWorks system is not currently running. Some of the points, like the fact that the toolbox isn't located on a uh, uh, a central drive on a server possibly. It's not something you need to really, really worry about too much if you're working on your own, but you might want to think about it if you're uh, working in an office with several people. Okay. So the Diagnostics tab just gives you general information, just helps you get things up to date and make sure everything's working properly. Once we've gone through that stage, it then gets to the troubleshooting stage where it will actually take you through to the SOLIDWORKS customer portal. So if I click on any one of these links, it will open up my internet browser and it takes me through to the login page of the customer portal. Okay. Within here, I just need to log in. Okay, there we go. Uh, once I've logged in, it takes me straight to the knowledge base. Now, we'll have a look at this in more detail in the next webinar, um, but the knowledge base is somewhere we can go and actually search through issues that might have popped up before and SolidWorks have dealt with. So we can go away and actually search whether something is already an existing issue for the software um, by narrowing down whether it's a solution or an SPR. And we can also do individual searches for maybe a search error. So say we install the software, we get an error code of 1603. Okay, it's a fairly common error. We can go on the SOLIDWORKS system and we can have a look what the 1603 error usually points towards and then try and run through some of the diagnostics uh, results you can actually go through on those and actually try and get rid of the issue. Okay. And each one of the links you'll find within the uh, SOLIDWORKS RX tool will just take you to different categories. Okay, and it just helps you to narrow down the issue. What is then worth doing is going to the System Maintenance tab. And the System Maintenance tab just allows us to make sure um, that our system is running properly. We've got things like the Check Disk tool, which is obviously uh, a Windows uh, program, which is obviously quite good to run um, as often as you can. Okay, uh, and then... Uh, the disk, disk defragmenter, actually we may want to run that every uh, sort of two months maybe uh, along with the check disk just to make sure our system is, uh, is running properly. Other things, it just clears out these directories. So things like temp directories, uh, just to make sure that uh, they're not sort of clogging our machine up with too much information. Uh, and we can select and deselect those different areas to turn 
uh, them on and off to actually be cleared or not. So we just toggle on the different things we want to uh, actually have a look at. So we can do and do a check disk for disk C and D and maybe defragment to uh, disk drive D. Okay. We can then start the maintenance and it will then ask us whether we want to do it now or whether we want to schedule it. And we can schedule it to run on maybe a weekly basis um, with a start time. Well, maybe it wants to start once I've uh, actually left the building. Okay, so at the end of the day possibly uh, on a particular time. And then we just click OK and then it schedules that and it will show you a little done button. Okay. And then it will run through when you actually leave and, and actually go through the uh, the maintenance. The next tab we've got is problem capture. Uh, and this is dealing with if you can't actually solve the problem, it may be something you've actually got to submit to SolidWorks for them to have a look at it. Okay, if you've got a customer portal account, you can do all that sort of submitting of problems through there. But if you actually want to record the issue, the first thing we need to do is click the record a video button. That will just launch the software if it's not already launched. And then we get the option to start the recording. Okay, so once you're ready, you click the start recording option. And then we just need to open up the document we want to have a look at. So I've got this issue on my machine. I know it's already ex an existing issue, but I'm going to show you it as an example. Okay. If I'm using a camera view like I am now, and I'll just take myself out of that for a second. Okay. If I go and save away a JPEG image of maybe this file when I'm using a camera view, I'll find that it won't actually save away properly. So I'll go to that camera view. I'll go to file, save as, and then I'll save it as a JPEG image. Okay. I'm going to save that away on my system. Okay. And once that's done, obviously it's worth just showing that so that the uh, who is viewing the video can see what the result was. So there's the result. You'll see it's come out blank and that's actually the issue. Okay, but there is obviously a workaround and it's always worth showing uh, what it normally reacts like. Maybe if we're not using the camera view. So if I switch myself into a normal display, I'll just get rid of this, uh, this banner at the side here. Zoom in on the model. Okay, get myself in a similar kind of setup, maybe with perspective turn on there okay and go ahead and save as again select the, uh, the JPEG okay I'll save that as a second file and if I just have a look at that as a result you'll see that that one actually saves away okay so that is always a good idea to show what would normally happen okay once we've gone through that scenario, what I can do then is I can stop the recording. I cl click finish recording. It tells us it's going to shut down the system. So it closes down SolidWorks. Okay, and then it packages file the files up with a few log files. So we've got things like the SolidWorks performance log files and things like that. Okay, that's all useful information when the SolidWorks team actually go through and actually try and deal with the issue. If we want to, we can then add more files to the zip. Now, obviously, we saved the way to JPEG images, so it might be worth actually including those into the uh, into this. So I'll just select both of those files, click open, and they'll get then get added into the zip. Okay, I can then click add files to package, and then if I select package files now, it then just takes a second, goes away, and zips those files into one uh, directory. Okay. And then it will just give us the option to actually save that onto our machine. Um, and I'm just going to save that away into this directory that I've just set up. Okay. Then we get the option to actually run through the look at this file within Windows, uh, browse through it, or continue to step three. If we click continue to step three, it just gets rid of this window. Okay. Then we can go ahead and diagnose and actually describe the problem. Now, you don't necessarily need to describe the problem if you're submitting it to your SolidWorks reseller, reseller. They will usually do that process for you. But if you want to actually submit this yourself to SolidWorks, it's worth just putting in a description of what's actually going on in terms of the steps to actually reproduce the problem. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do that on this particular one. Once we've gone through that, uh, we can actually view what we've created within the RX tool. It's a viewer as well as uh, 
be able to capture the issues we click the open button and then we can browse to the location where we've uh, actually saved that item and click open it opens that zip file and it takes you through to the files and logs tab in this tab we can click play recording and it'll just open the recording up so we can actually have a look at it now what you'll notice with the recording is it's quite low quality okay it shows the SolidWorks um, users which buttons you're pressing on your keyboard okay as well as when you're clicking but do bear in mind because it's low quality it's usually best to go a little bit slower than you would normally okay now we don't need to view all of that but that's the kind of thing that you can do within here you can also have a look at maybe some of the SolidWorks logs so maybe the journal file you can open that up and just have a look at that okay and if you're able to pick up the issue from here uh, that could obviously be quite useful okay if not then you'd go through onto the customer portal and we'll show this next time you then submit that uh, as an SR to SolidWorks or you'd send it through to your reseller and they'll do it for you okay the next tab we've got is the add-ins tab and this is all um, things we can actually uh, maybe add into the RX tool that might be useful the other thing we've got on this tab is the the benchmark tool and the benchmark tool just does a general test of our system you click the start benchmark tool it will run through and actually start the uh, system test it's always best to not have anything else running at the time and bear in mind it will take about 30 minutes to run through okay now I'm not going to run through it now because like I say it will take quite a while but it will run through sort of five stages uh, and you won't really be able to use the system too much at the time anyway so once you've actually done that, once you've run a benchmark test, it will give you some results. It will pop up a little box, and you'll see you'll get a result of, uh, this is one I ran earlier on. This is uh, the graphics result processor, input output, the overall score, and then for rendering and real view performance as well. And that results, you can then take it forward. You can compare it to other people's results online, okay? And you can have a look at what the other people have achieved. And you'll also see it on a general scoreboard as well. So it's quite a useful test just to have a look at how your system's doing generally in comparison to uh, other people's. Okay. This add-in section, we can also add in other things in here as well. Some some uh, programs maybe that might be useful. So possibly one of the things I might want to do is add in this little SolidWorks program. It just allows me to update my toolbox to the latest version. Okay. So I can take a toolbox file that may be 2012 and I can update it to 2013. That may be something that becomes quite useful for the Arx tool later on. We can also go in uh, and we can select all files and I can maybe add that assembly file that I had earlier on. Um, and that would just allow me to access maybe some of the files that I've used for our Rx uh, packages in the past. Okay. And you can browse and you can add as many things as you want to this list. And then they'll just be openable from this, uh, from this location. So you just click on them and that will open them up. Oops, that one unfortunately didn't open, but it, it will open them up from this uh, from this location. Or if you want to, you can actually just delete them out by clicking the delete key by selecting them. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of all the kind of things you can do with the RX tool. Like I say, there's a fair amount you can actually look at there uh, in terms of capturing problems. It's usually uh, the most useful tab you'll find are the diagnostics and the uh, uh, the problem capturing tab along with the files and logs okay thanks very much for watching if anyone's got any questions uh, feel free just to uh, log those through now Okay.